There are a lot of fake quotes attributed to the great Stoic philosopher Epictetus floating around out there, and as opposed to some of the other videos that I've done in this series, unmasking, identifying fake quotes, where most of them are definitely not by the person that they're attributed to, and we're able to say exactly where they came from. Some of the fake quotes are not quite as fake when it comes to Epictetus, in part because they come from people who are trying to do something nice for their readers, and I suppose for Epictetus, and that is to put Epictetus into their own words, that is to paraphrase or engage in what we call a gloss. Unfortunately, when this happens, a lot of the meaning gets changed or left out or something new is added in. And then people who don't know any better or perhaps are, what should we say, a little bit lackadaisical in checking their sources, immediately assume that if it's in a book that's attributed to Epictetus, it must be by Epictetus, and they go ahead and repeat it as if it's a genuine quote. So as we're going to see, quite a few of them are going to stem from one book in particular that has done that in recent years. So let's go on to the fake quotes. We begin with one, and you notice here that the person who has quoted it is actually using the wrong image, but in a certain sense, it's not quite the wrong image. He has just attributed it to the wrong person. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Skillful pilots gain their reputation from storms and tempests. And you notice that that's not Epictetus's image it, right there, but rather Epicurus. An easy mistake to make if one is not doing due diligence on the internet. And as it turns out, this comes from a book about Epicurus by Charles de saint Evremont, an essay on the vindication of Epicurus and his doctrine. So not something by Epictetus at all. We have another funny Epicurus-related one where people, again, are mixing them up. Either God wants to abolish evil and cannot, or he can, but does not want to. This would be an extraordinary thing for Epictetus to be saying, probably one of the most religious of the Stoics whose works we currently have, and this is from the famous formulation of the problem of evil, a way of denying providence. And we get this through Lactantius, who is summarizing Epicurus's argument. So again, clearly not a genuine quote by Epictetus, but expressing something that he would never get behind. Now we get to a more plausible one with this quote, circumstances don't make the man, they only reveal him to himself. And we actually know where this does come from. You can find this quote out there attributed properly to this guy, James Allen, As Man Thinketh is the book. So it's not Epictetus. We're not quite sure how this ended up getting attributed to him other than the fact that Epictetus does think that we do reveal our character through our actions. And, you know, it is true that circumstances don't make the person, according to Epictetus, the person decides what kind of person they're going to be, but he didn't say this. Now, here's another really interesting one. Nature has given men one tongue but two ears, that we may hear from others twice as much as we speak. And there's a lot of variations out there. Sometimes nature has given people one mouth but two ears. You see sometimes it's placed in this uh, older English form, and it's being attributed to Epictetus. And I do have to give credit to Sententiae Antiquae here. They've got a whole discussion 
of this proverb. And as it turns out, this is coming from George Long's translations of Epictetus's fragments, ostensibly coming from Stobaeus, but as the Sententiae Antiquae people found out when they went to look at it, this is not actually from the Epictetus section, but it's borrowed erroneously from a section where Stobaeus is discussing Zeno, who is attributed to have said this particular quote. We don't know if either of them actually said it, but it made its way into ancient discourse, and then here we see it being wrongly attributed to Epictetus. Finally, we have one, and we're not sure where this one actually comes from. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at, often quoted as being by Epictetus. It's not there in any of Epictetus's works, not even in the fragments. So nobody really knows where this one comes from, but you can find many books and many websites attributing it to Epictetus, quite wrongly. Now, we get into the other half of our quotations, and you're going to notice a common aspect to all of these. So let's take a look at this one. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Now, this is not by Epictetus. It is actually from Sharon LaBelle's very popular The Art of Living, and it's a gloss on Enchiridion chapter 33. The majority of her book is glosses on Epictetus, paraphrasing things, often adding new things in, changing the meanings slightly, or sometimes changing the meanings considerably. So this is not really genuine Epictetus. This is Epictetus filtered through Sharon LaBelle. Uh, it would be as if we were quoting some other person who says, Epictetus, the gist of what he's saying is this, but there's nothing actually like it in the text. It would be weird to see Epictetus talking about people uplifting you or their presence calling forth your best. I'm not sure what that would even translate. Let's look at the next one. Caretake this moment. Immerse yourself in its particulars. Respond to this person, this challenge, this deed. Quit evasion. Stop giving yourself needless trouble. It is time to really live to fully inhabit the situation you happen to be in now. Now, if you've read a lot of Epictetus, you know he doesn't actually talk in this sort of jargon. This sounds rather, let's say, new agey. And this is also from Sharon LaBelle's The Art of Living, directly from their verbatim word for word. So it's kind of like stuff that Epictetus says at certain points, but he wouldn't say, respond to this person, this challenge, this deed. He might say, stop giving yourself needless trouble, but he wouldn't say fully inhabit the situation you happen to be in. So again, not a real quote by Epictetus. Uh, we come to another one. From this instant on, vow to stop disappointing yourself Separate yourself from the mob. Decide to be extraordinary and do what you need to do now. So this, too, is from Sharon LaBelle's The Art of Living. This is a gloss on Enchiridion chapter 51. It also bears some interesting similarities to a quote attributed to Edmund Hillary, which doesn't appear to be by him either, famous mountain climber. It's actually from a Rolex ad where it says people do not decide to become extraordinary. They decide to accomplish extraordinary things. There's a common theme there, isn't there, of doing extraordinary things. And that's what makes you extraordinary. So again, not, not Epictetus himself. Um, here's another one. Do not try to seem wise to others. If you want to live a wise life, live it on your own terms and in your own 
Eyes. This is straight out of Sharon LaBelle's The Art of Living, and it might be in part a gloss on Epictetus saying, don't try to appear to be a philosopher to others, you know, keep that under wraps. But he doesn't say if you want to live a wise life, live it on your own terms and in your own eyes. Finally, we get to something that some people might say, well, no, this isn't a fake quote. And I would actually give them that because this is rather a mistranslation that unfortunately takes on a life of its own and winds up becoming the Internet meme that essentially like, you know, Gresham's Law, bad money drives out good. A bad translation drives out the good ones that you could find out there. Small minded people blame others Average people blame themselves. The wise see all blame as foolishness. Now, if you know your Epictetus and Caridian, you recognize that as uh, kind of similar to what's going on in chapter five. But here's how it actually runs. Uh, and, well, I should mention this before we get into that. LaBelle says something a little bit more. So, so people have kind of con, uh, consolidated or condensed what she says. Small-minded people habitually reproach others for their own misfortunes. Average people reproach themselves. Those who are dedicated to a life of wisdom understand that the impulse to blame something or someone is foolishness. Now, what did Epictetus actually say? Well, here's a closer translation. It is the part of an uneducated person. The word there that is referring to education, paideia, right? An undeveloped person. So it's not a small-minded person, per se. It is the part of the uneducated person to blame others where he himself fares ill. To blame himself is the part of one whose education has begun, the person who has started becoming formed. And then to blame neither another nor his own self is the part of one whose education is complete. Notice nothing there about the impulse to blame something or someone is foolishness. This is something that got added in through that book, The Art of Living. And so is it a fake quote? Isn't it a fake quote? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide yourself. I just think that nobody should be reposting, repeating, uh, and relying upon those, as unfortunately so many people are doing. As always, I'll close here by saying, whenever you see something that seems a little off, you should exercise some healthy suspicion. You should try to see if you can figure out where this came from. If it doesn't have a citation with the work that it's supposed to have come from, you should actually be a bit iffy about it. You want to demand the sources. And if you're not sure whether something is a fake quote, don't repost it, right? Don't regurgitate it. Don't rely upon it. If you do, well, then somebody may come along to point out that you have built your house of cards on a foundation of sand, if we want to mix a couple metaphors here. So there's all of that to think about. And I do really suggest checking out the website Sententiae Antiquae. They are sleuths in finding and identifying and then uh, telling us about the background of fake quotes from ancient philosophy. So that is it for this one, we've got plenty more fake quotes with other authors, other thinkers, other great philosophers coming up down the line.